Hey, what's up everybody? This is Clayton Gonzalez with Go Analytics, and today I wanna to show you how to create year-over-year -year calculations in Power BI. So let's go. Hey, welcome to our YouTube channel. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications to stay up to date on all of our latest videos. All right, so let's get started here. Okay, so here we are inside of Power BI Desktop, and I've got some data here from Statistics Canada on new housing price indexes. And uh, let's say we wanted to create a measure now that calculates this index uh, versus last year so that we can get something, maybe something like this, uh, where we have it on a map and we can see how the price has changed year over year. Or maybe, you wanna be able to add a tooltip so that when somebody hovers over this, they can see not only the housing price index, but also how it's changed versus the same period last year. All right, so let's take a look at our data set here. So we have a geography um, column here. We have a new housing price index category. We have a date column and we have our value column. So we've already created a measure to sum up the value into our uh, new housing price index here. So this is just the sum of our value column. But now we want to essentially create a similar measure to this, bringing it back one year. So how can we do that? All right, let's create a new measure here. I'm just uh, right clicking here and selecting new measure. And we're going to create a new measure here for last year. So we're going to call this our new housing price index for last year. And to do that, we're going to use the calculate function. So the calculate function allows us to pass in an expression and any number of filters. So we're going to pass in our expression here, which is going to be the measure that we created before. So our new housing price index. And for a filter, we're going to filter it based on the date column. So there's a couple of different ways that you could go about this. You could use the date add function. So date add takes in three arguments. As you can see it here, it takes a reference date. So we could use our ref date here column and then it takes in the number of intervals. In our case, we would include a minus one because we want to go back one year. And then the last argument is what kind of interval it is. So we would select a year. So in this case here, what we're essentially saying is return us the new housing price index, but apply a filter that brings it back one year. So it's going to take a look at our uh, context here. Uh, so if we're looking at the month of December, for example, it's going to take December 2023 and take this date and go back one year. So it would display December 2022. There's also a simpler function that can be added here. Instead of the date add, we can actually pass this function called same period last year. And this one just requires a date. So we can just pass our reference date into this function. And this would be the equivalent of using the date add function. It's just taking everything and taking it back to the same period as last year. So if we're looking at December 1st, 2023, it's going to take a look at December 1st, 2022. Okay, so let's take a look at that. So I'm going to take it, uh, take this chart here, and I'm going to convert it into a table just to make it really easy to uh, understand. And I'm going to remove any sort of subtotals from this table. Okay, so here we have um, our breakdowns, and we have our um, our new housing price index. So let's take a look at our new housing price index for last year. So if I add that in, and I'm going to change the ordering here. 
So here we are in December 2023. We see that for housing only, the new housing price index was 127.2. And now we see that for last year was 129.2. So if we go down this list here and try to find December 2022, we'll see that it's exactly 129.2. So our calculation here is doing the right job. So it's taking the value based on the month that we've passed here and the day. So we're looking at December 1st, 2023. It takes a look at one year prior, so December 2022, and returns this value right into this context. So this is exactly how we can go about creating a year over year percentage calculation. So now all we would have to do now is to divide these two. Uh, if you recall, the calculation for year over year percentage would be uh, current year um, divided by last year minus one, right? So if we can do this exact calculation in our model here. So if I can create a new measure, and now we're going to call this one uh, year percentage change year over year calculation. And this for this one, we're going to uh, use the divide function and we pass in our current value, which is the uh, NHPI uh, and we pass in our NHPI for last year and all of this minus one. So now I can click the little check mark here to accept this and I'm going to format this as a percentage change just so that we can really see that clearly. And now let's add that onto our table here so I can take our percentage change and add it to our table. And now we have the percentage change. So this is this number divided by this minus one gives us a, roughly a minus 1.6% decline. So that's it. That's how you can create year over year calculations in your Power BI reports. Oh, by the way, we have something coming up for you in the next couple of months here. We're creating an online course that takes you from zero knowledge of Power BI all the way to a experienced user. So stay tuned for that and we'll be providing more information in the next couple of months here.